Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. In the previous video I showed you the Evergreen game played by Adolf Anderson. Sparkling combination but um, I wasn't overly impressed by it and I was rather critical of Anderson's opponent and his play. Well here I'd like to show you a game where Anderson has a much stronger opponent, namely Paul Morphy, who came to Europe in the mid 19th century and, and well, basically for a couple of years, um, really just destroyed the opposition, more or less. And in a match that they played, Morphy defeated Anderson convincingly. So I want to look at one of their games. Now this wasn't from the actual match. It says here it's a, it's a casual game. But I think it displays two different um, different styles of chess. And you can see, well, to my eyes, that Morphy was on a different level. So remember, Anderson is kind of the epitome of the romantic school of chess. He plays the King's Gambit and not even Knight F3 but plays now bishop c4, the so-called bishop's gambit. Now, if you remember, Anderson Kizaritsky, the so-called immortal game, went queen h4 check here. And then b5, a, a counter-sacrifice, and, and so on. But already, you know, I look at black's queen and I think, this is so ugly. <laughs> and it doesn't matter that white's king has been displaced. Uh, it just looks all wrong. And... and this whole adventure with queen h4 check, I think, is just not very practical at all. But, you know, that was hot theory in, in the mid-19th century. But what, watch how Morphy plays it. You know, he just doesn't get led astray here. It's all about quick development. Knight f6. In fact, when I was uh, putting together my DVD on the King's Gambit... Uh, a couple of years ago, I looked at the bishop's gambit because there are some very interesting lines for white um, if black plays inaccurately. But I have to say, I didn't like knight f6 from white's point of view, and I just couldn't make it work. And I didn't really want to recommend something where I felt, well, that just isn't very good for white at all. So I stuck with uh, knight f3. So what's so good about knight f6? Well, if knight c3, then c6 is a reasonable move, but actually the move I don't like from white's viewpoint is bishop b4. So just simple development. And if e5, you strike with d5. So you're counter-attacking in the centre, and this is well known to be, well, let's just say very comfortable for black. And indeed, in this game, after knight f6, attacking the pawn, Anderson played e5. And Morphy responded with d5. That's the trick. So if pawn takes knight, pawn takes bishop, well, you know, whose development looks better here? You know, these bishops can come out very easily. Um, look at white's queen side. Doesn't look very attractive at all. And even if the king reaches safety, well, there's only two pawns in front of the king. That position is a lot of fun for black. So after d5, Anderson played the bishop back to b3, and now Morphy launched the knight into the middle of the board, and, well, this it's on a beautiful square. Now queen h4 is quite a significant threat, so that has to be stopped. And now just bishop g4. Nice development. The, the pin is really annoying. Um... The if d3, then, I mean, there's a couple of options. The the knight will probably just go to c5, actually. And, and it's really such a solid position for black. Castles, knight c6. So a little bit of pressure here. And if d3, then bishop c5 check is really annoying. And king h1, well, you can just take the exchange. And here, if d4, well, that, uh, in fact, that's not very good at all, is it? I just realised <laughs> knight takes pawn 
is an absolute killer. Queen takes and then bishop c5 wins the queen. So bishop a4 played. I mean, this pawn has to be held. Now g5. Well, this actually makes a lot of sense to hang on to this pawn because that prevents this bishop coming into play. So it's not just about greed, it's not just about maintaining that pawn advantage, it's actually about securing the king side as well. Bishop takes knight, and now d4. d3 is possible, but then just check again, and bishop b6, and then c5, undermining white's pawn chain. So d4 played, but look at that knight. I mean, it's such a beautiful square. c3, let's tack white center. And just bishop e7, super solid. So, well, we can see the outcome of the opening already. Um, let's let me count the pawns. Yeah, black is still a pawn up, and a very useful pawn. Just restricting that bishop. The bishop pins the knight very nicely. That knight is on beautiful outpost in the middle of the board. There's pressure on white center already. So pawn takes pawn followed by c5 is certainly an option and the king is completely safe could just castle king side it's white's move of course but the king with these pawns here is actually very safe on the king side so there was no big adventure from morphe you know he, he didn't bother with with this check on h4 it's all about sound development and you know he's managed to to back the bishop pair as well so now Anderson tries to create some complications with b4. And Morphy doesn't mess around. But first of all, he takes. And, well, of course, that, that can't be taken because of queen a4 check. But he just castles. No adventures. The king is actually very safe on the king side. I mean, look at these pieces. I mean, lots of pieces around the king, basically. Queen b3. And just compare. Look at Anderson's development. Now rook b8, very simple. Attacking this pawn. a3 defends. And c5. So this is not getting better for white. Just more pressure on the position. You know, it feels as though Morphe is just on another level here. You know, he's playing normal modern chess and Anderson's position just looks like a complete wreck. Knight c3, about time he got some pieces out. Knight takes, pawn takes pawn on b4, so Morphy wins another pawn. Queen is attacked and now a5, very nice move, so that just means that everything is protected really important. So it's almost as though the queen side is now closed. So white simply has no chance of some kind of counterplay on the queen side. So inevitably play is going to turn to the king side. But Morphy is pretty solid there. It's nice that bishop has a nice anchor. h4. So Anderson goes for it h6, just holding that pawn chain nice and solid. Pawns are exchanged. And g3, well, I mean, it's absolutely necessary for white to break down these pawns. The only other move, apart from g3, is just to sacrifice the knight. But uh, even for our romantic player, Anderson, this is too much. I mean, after this, the, the queen can simply move and, well, as we're about to see, once that rook swings over to the king side, it's black. It's white's king that's going to be in trouble. Black is on the attack. There's no decent follow-up because development is very poor. So let's come back. So g3 played. Um, my computer likes bishop h3, but I have to say I like the way Morphy plays this. He's simply bringing another piece over to the king side, and and it and it's very powerful. Once, once that rook reaches g6 or potentially h6 as well, 
um, the counterattack starts. Remember, you know, White's king is rather exposed here. If pawn takes pawn, then rook g6, the rook comes over, and well, <laughs> you can see it, it's White's king that's going to be in trouble. Black is still a pawn up. That's kind of a nice thing to have. Um, a nice asset. You know, if, if there's going to be uh, if there are going to be exchanges, then black is still going to be better. But, well, the problem is that actually white's king comes under fire. So rook b6 just played. Rook a2. Okay, that's well motivated. The rook comes across to the king side somewhere. Rook g6. Good move. So when the f file, uh, when, excuse me, when the g file opens after exchanging on the f file, then the rook is in a great position. Rook g2 played. But just bishop h3. Yep, that beautiful light square bishop comes good. So what's Anderson's idea? Well, he played e6, so he's looking to just give that knight a square on e5 and try to stir things up. But, well, Morphy obviously calculated this very well, and he just took the rook, and after pawn takes pawn check, just played king g7. In fact, the king is very well shielded by black's pieces. And after this move, queen c8, well, it's clear that uh, the counterattack is starting. The queen looking down at these squares, also potentially looking down the c file as well. Knight e5, no problem. The rook moves. And now there's going to be a check on h3. Okay, that covers this square, but now rook number two comes over. So Morphy has basically just calculated that his counterattack is going to come through in time. Pawn takes pawn, and here we go. And this isn't too difficult to calculate. It's all with checks, basically. It's all forcing moves. And don't forget... That queen is waiting in the wings to stride into the position. Rook check. Okay, that's nasty. Um, so if king e2, then just rook takes queen. And knight f3. And now just a, a nice little concluding combination. Rook takes knight. So if king takes, finally the queen enters into the position. And that's checkmate. And rook takes. The queen comes good on the c-file. Queen takes. And that is mate. Well, Anderson was just a move away from queening, but okay, this this wasn't a race at all, basically. Morphy had, had calculated everything out and, to my eyes, completely convincing victory and well basically yeah like I said he didn't get involved in any adventures he just developed very smoothly and made sure that he got a pawn in the middle uh, with d5 and you know his pieces are just already stand very well this is the reason I didn't adv advocate the bishop's gambit <laughs> So, yeah, I think Morphy was on a different level, basically. Um, really, really interesting to see, to go back and look at their games. Let me know what you think. Am I being too hard on Anderson? <laughs> Thanks for watching.